time to belabor the obvious. We all know or should know that the essence of rock and roll is rebellion. The only reason for rock to exist is to be a soundtrack for the movie of teenage angst and anger. A far more interesting as well as profitable line of investigation is to try and understand something of the spiritual implications of this rebellion. Where did it come from? What are its byproducts? Where is it leading us? Is teenage angst and anger just a fact of life like zits? And the music just a harmless way of venting aggression? Or is the truth heavier than that? Well, we could spend hours and still not do justice to this issue. But let's try to gain at least some general insights into these important questions by briefly examining a few key dynamics in our culture's love affair with rebellion. Before we get started, though, we need to make an important distinction. By rebellion, the Bible means anarchy and lawlessness, not the resistance of good against evil. God doesn't want blind submission to the earthly status quo. Jesus was the ultimate stick in the eye for injustice, indifference, and hypocrisy, and was ultimately hung on a cross for it. And we're called to follow in his footsteps. The 60s and the rock and roll revolution, for example, came about not because of what was righteous about America in the 50s, but because of what was wrong. The love of money and materialism. The superficial and ultimately idolatrous America right or wrong attitude that often passed for true patriotism. Parents handing their kids over to professionals, whether academic or ecclesiastical, to be raised and nurtured platitudes and or silence instead of honest and vigorous discussion on key life issues like sex, politics, and religion. Entrenched sin in attitudes concerning race and equality. A war that was not fought biblically. Good boys can, but good girls don't attitudes about premarital sex. Hypocritical approaches to substance abuse. And worst of all, a cultural, wishy-washy, I'm a Christian because I'm an American kind of spirituality. On and on it goes. True biblical Christianity calls for open prophetic resistance to these types of institutionalized evil. No doubt, if the church had been faithful in this regard, the anarchistic and ultimately occult forms of rebellion that took root in the 60s would have never prospered. So. Turning the world right side up is good. Plunging it into do-what-you-want-to-do anarchy is, well, rebellion. With that critical distinction made, let's now look at a few aspects of the rebellious spirit that did take hold in the 60s and what they mean for us today. Number one, rebellion is evil. Though frequently celebrated today as something cool, comical, and even heroic, make no mistake about it, God hates and punishes the sin of rebellion. The evil man seeks only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger will be sent against him. Furthermore, God views it as a form of occultism something we'll look at in more detail a bit later. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. <laughs> Lastly, while all rebellion is serious, there's one specific type that especially tears at the fabric of divine order. Honor your father and your mother. To rebel against, to dishonor one's parents, is so abominable to God that cursing or striking them, as well as other extreme forms of protracted rebellion against parental authority, was a capital offense in Old Testament Israel. In this context, one shudders to think how God views rapper Eminem's rebelliousness, as well as the millions of fans who feed off his depravity. And there's a million of us just like me, who cuss like me, who just don't give a like me, who dress like me, walk, talk, and act like me. 
Hit her with the skateboard. Parents and their authority have become a primary target for the grotesque defiance that courses through the world of rock and roll. Rock and roll is supposed to bring you crazed joy and rebellion for no apparent reason. That's what it started out as music to your parents off. And that's what rock and roll ought to be. Kids ought to come up and just hit you right in the face. I don't mean breaking noses, but I mean with what it is they have to say and dressing different so that adults are going, oh, God, yeah, that's it, you know. Make them throw up. The parents and mom and dad start to like corn, that's when we become not cool. Rock and roll is attitudes. It's uh, it's all the things that your parents told you don't do, you can do. Green Day's Billy Joe Armstrong once advised an audience, when you go home, I want you to eat your parents. I'm not allowed to listen to him when she's home, but, you know, I don't care. They hate it, but I still go, I don't give a what they say. This is rock and roll. Parents always hate rock and roll. It's in custom. If parents like rock and roll, it must suck. Just keep this in mind. They're playing our CDs when you're not home. They're playing my tapes in your own car. And I'm influencing your children. Just don't push your luck. At a Doors concert in Washington, D.C., Jim Morrison's mother, by all accounts a good and decent woman, came to see her son perform. His only acknowledgement was to stare at her as he sang the infamous words to the song, The End, Mother, I Want to Blank You. He never attempted to see or talk to his parents again and usually referred to them as being dead. As Perry Farrell said when asked by Rolling Stone for his secret to happiness, move as far away from your parents as you can, because I feel like I have no parents. I do what makes sense in my head. Number two, rebellion is inane, hypocritical, and doesn't work. Not only is this dishonor your parents' attitude among the worst types of sin, it ultimately violates the one law of God that goes so deep into the human conscience that almost nobody will deny it philosophically. That is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Isn't it interesting how the rock and roll, do your own thing lifestyle goes out the window when suddenly it's the rock star who's the parent? Madonna, for example, became a star largely through the medium of television and music videos, getting rich selling sex and rebellion to other people's children. Now she has two of her own. And guess what's one of the big rules that governs her household? You've got it. <laughs> she can't watch TV and... Um... She can't watch TV? No. This irony became even more painfully obvious in a feature Rolling Stone did on Ozzy Osbourne. The godfather of hardcore rock and roll rebellion was affectionately seen as a man reduced to trembling like a frightened chihuahua, taking Zola and seeing a therapist once or twice a day, plus afternoon AA meetings, just to fight off the demons of addiction. So much for rebellion as a lifestyle choice. And yet, perhaps it is his relationship with his children that is the most tragic and telling. Glaring down at his brood, Rolling Stone reported, he opens his mouth and says, if you don't shut up, I'll, I'll, he goes silent. His kids look up at him. Well, yes, what will you do? and they start snickering and giggling. 
for Indeed.